put a finger down if an idea has ever popped up in your mind and you discard this idea because you think it's too big for you. Put a finger down if all you do is think and think and think about doing something but you never get to doing it. Now put a finger down if you've ever been at the verge of launching a product, starting a business or doing something and then you think to yourself, Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I do not stand a chance. Maybe there are lots of people that are already doing this thing and I cannot even compete with them. And then you stop. If you've put three fingers down, then this video is a must watch for you. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are seeing me for the very first time, my name is Okpaya Me. Thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for stopping by. I'm glad that you are here, but please do one more thing for me. Kindly click on the subscribe button and also turn on your post notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. Thank you, do it now. Join this family. And to my returning subscribers, thank you for always, always coming back to watch my videos. I do not take your love for granted. I do not take your support for granted. Thank you so much. From the title and thumbnail of this video, you already know that I'm about to talk about self-doubt. And without wasting so much of your time, let's get right into it. So what exactly is self-doubt? If you put down three fingers earlier, then you probably know the feeling of self-doubt. Self-doubt is that feeling that tells you that you're not good enough, that you do not stand a chance for success, that every other person is better than you. And trust me, everybody experiences self-doubt in varying degrees. But the difference is how we act, what we do about these feelings, if we let them hold us down or we actually find ways to conquer them and move forward. We do not just start doubting ourselves. There are things, events, experiences, maybe even people that cause us to actually start doubting ourselves. But then if you feel like because you did not drop three fingers earlier, then you are safe. Maybe not. But here are some signs that you're actually dealing with self-doubt. Number one, the perfectionist syndrome. Like, do you sit down and think and think and think and think about an idea, but you never get to act on it just because... It does not seem perfect in your head or you do not have the perfect idea. You're even just like me, you're filming a content and then you feel like, oh my God, the lighting is bad. My face is looking this type of way. Maybe my dress could be better. Maybe my lipstick could be better. Maybe the way I speak could be better. And then you think and think and think and think so much that you fault your idea, so much that you fault your effort, so much that you fault everything that has gone into creating your masterpiece just because you think it's not perfect. Oftentimes, we think that we're actually helping ourselves because, you know, quality is good and it's okay that you want something to be perfect. But trust me, you cannot be close to perfect if you do not start. But most of the time, we're trapped in that perfectionist trap that we're trying to, you know, make everything perfect before it goes out. We're trying to make everything look good before we can put it out. Trust me, there are people that have worse content than you do. There are people that have worse ideas than you do, but they are making things happen. They think that they are all that and nobody can tell them otherwise. And that is the difference between them and yourself. Number two, the comparison game. Comparison is a thief of joy. Like, honestly, I would hear this statement over and over again and I'm like, oh, okay. But I had to experience some things for me to actually understand this thing. And do not think that it is easy to not compare yourself with people. Trust me, it's not easy. Because, you know, there are people killing it. There are people doing big things. There are people doing great things. And there you are. You feel like, oh, okay, I'm just filming with my phone. And there are people who have cameras. I do not have money to travel yet. And there are people who already travel. So um, what's the point of trying to, you know, be a travel content creator when I do not have money to go to Maldives, when I do not have money to go to Seychelles. But you actually have money to go to Lagos. You have money to go to Centendre. You have money to go to the next city or the next town. And that counts. But you know, the moment you start comparing yourself to every other person, then you begin to doubt yourself. Then you begin to think that what you have is not good enough. Then you begin to think that all odds are in the favor of every other person except you. But it is a lie. 
funny thing is you might just have 500 subscribers on youtube and you're having like 200 300 views but you're comparing yourself to someone with like a million subscribers and with thousands of views and you're feeling like oh maybe i'm a failure maybe i'm not doing well my guy you need to relax number three the negative self-talk funny thing is we forget that things happen up here before it comes out here so sometimes you might even be saying, oh, I'm all that, I am confident, I believe in myself. But right in your mind, you do not even believe. You do not believe that you are confident. You do not believe that you are all that. You do not believe that you stand a chance. And then these things, in the long run, can affect the way we perceive ourselves and ultimately affect the things that we say to ourselves. So, you know, jokingly or randomly, you can just say that, ah, Oh my god i'm not like this person you know i mean this person is like so good at what they do and i'm like just there or somebody even gives you a compliment like oh your content is so nice you've improved and you're like ah, what did i do that small thing you're pulling yourself down and all of this are signs of self-doubt like you might not know it because you know you say it casually you might not know it because i mean you think comparing yourself to somebody on instagram or youtube is something really light and it's not something that you take seriously but all of these things come together to actually start to you know build some form of self-doubt within you so let me share a story with you and i must say that this video is for me as much as it is for you so like over time i would you know say that oh i trust my skills i believe in myself i'm a good writer i'm a good um I'm a good brand strategist, I'm a good social media manager, I'm all that and stuff. But then my partner and I, my husband and I, we've been nursing an idea and then at some point, I began to stall on this idea because I feel like maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I'm not ready to actually go live with this idea. And you know, I look at some people, look at what they've built, and I'm like, oh my God, if it does not look like what they've built, then maybe it's not supposed to go live. Or if I do not have those things that they already have, then maybe I'm not supposed to put this out there. But I was doing myself a disservice because these people with their littlest thing, if that's a word, they've started and they are growing and they are doing well. But me, with the big idea, the idea is actually big. With a big idea, I'm here in my room, nursing this idea over and over and over again, and I've not done anything about it. The difference between myself and them is that they are actually working, they are acting, they are doing things, and they are growing. And then I'm just stuck with an idea, and I'm not doing anything with it. And in the long run, if everybody has to come forward with the fruit of their labor, or like with the evidence of their work, I would not say, oh, I mean, I have an idea and I've been thinking about it. But you didn't do anything about it. I honestly don't know what has gotten you to the point where you are right now. What has made you start to, you know, doubt yourself. But trust me, something that you can figure out. Because me filming this video right now is me overcoming self-doubt. So I had to like, you know, do these things that I'm about to tell you for myself. Because it's May already and... At the beginning of this year, we said we we're going to stand on business. We said we were going to crush those goals. We said we we're going to do these things. But self-doubt is holding us back. And we need to get to the point where we tell ourselves, not any longer. Self-doubt, you need to lose your grip on me because I'm all that. I'm confident. I can do it. You need to believe in yourself. And then I'm not all talks with no um, tips or things that you need to do to break free. So I'll be talking about some things that have actually worked for me that has made me get to the point where I feel like I'm actually crushing self-doubt. And maybe I'm not there, there yet, but I'm doing things and I'm getting things done. The first thing is to be careful of who you surround yourself with or who you share your ideas with. Trust me, your environment can make or marry you. It can determine how far you go in life. It can determine how big you even dream because you don't... Know, Imagine you are in the midst of people who are so comfortable with the barest minimum. In the long run, you either join them or you have to leave that community. Because you cannot think bigger than where you are. You cannot think bigger than the box that you have put yourself in. Sometimes we feel like, oh, I want to be an influencer. I mean, I say this casually. And I'm like, I want to be an influencer. 
And then while I have some friends that are like, oh girl, you can do this, you can become this, you can do all of that. I have some other friends that tell me like, guy, be realistic. <laughs> you need to get a job. You need to this, you need to that. While they probably are saying that out of like their innocent hearts, maybe, but they are killing the dream of becoming an influencer in me gradually. But they don't know it. And I do not know it as well. Because, you know, you will get to a point where you feel like, oh, actually, maybe I'm I'm overdreaming. Maybe I'm reaching too high by saying I want to become an influencer. So maybe I just need to go and get a job. So think about your environment currently. Who are the people that you talk to? When you share your ideas with them, what do they tell you? Do they tell you that, yes, you can do this? What can I do to help you to achieve this? Or they say, oh, my God, you better be realistic. You better find something to do. You better leave that idea and better this you better that think about it if you have people like that in your environment you need to get out of that environment you need to rid yourself of those people because in the long run you either become like them because there's no way you want to thrive in that type of environment there's no way you want to thrive with those type of people i mean there's this saying that says that show me your friends and i will tell you who you are if you want to be an influencer surround yourself with like-minded people surround yourself with people who are either influencers already or are aiming to become influencers if you want to be a youtuber Surround yourself with YouTubers or people who are planning to become YouTubers. If you do not have friends around you that are already YouTubers, you can start watching people. Make sure that you're taking things, you're taking content, you're taking ideas, you're taking words that, you know, um, encourage you, motivate you to be all that you can be. Not words that will pull you down, not um, videos that will tell you that you can't be all of that. Not advices that will tell you to be realistic, get a life, get a job. No, you don't need that type of people around you because they would keep sowing the seed of self-doubt in you. And at some point, it would germinate. And at some point, you would believe it. And at some point, you would discard your dreams. You discard your goals, your aspirations, just because somebody somewhere said, be realistic. Be careful of the people that you call your friends and the people that you surround yourself with. The second thing that I would say you should do is to pay attention to the things that you think about. Our mind is so powerful. Our mind is a powerhouse. I mean, there's a Bible verse that says that as a man thinketh, so he is. That shows how powerful our mind is. So I would advise that you start thinking positive thoughts. You start thinking um, big things. You start thinking the I can things. You discard the I cannot things. You start thinking that you are capable of big things. You start thinking that you are all that. You start thinking highly of yourself. You start thinking that if that person can do it, then I can do it as well. You start thinking that there are no limitations. You start thinking that if you set your mind to it, you'll be able to do it. Because trust me, your mind is as powerful as God knows what. And if you do not take charge of your thoughts, eventually, you get to a point where you just doubt everything. The third thing I will talk about is that you need to stop comparing yourself with people. Like your race is not their race. Their race is not your race. Their journey is different from yours. So please stop comparing yourself to somebody. Stop wishing that you were like them. Stop wishing that you had what they have. Stop wishing that you talk like the way they talk. Stop wishing that You have the life that they have because trust me, you do not even know the battles that they are fighting behind closed doors. When you set a standard, you work hard to meet that standard. But when you're comparing yourself with somebody, you're like just there and then like judging yourself based on the person's results and you're not doing anything because you just feel like, I can't do that. I mean, that person is like up there. I do not even have half as much the clothes that they have so how do i want to film a get ready with me content bruv film it with your jean and your top stop comparing like instead of scrolling mindlessly on instagram comparing yourself to other creators i want you to carry your notepad start brainstorming you know write down ideas start looking for you know execution plans start trying to do the things you need to do to be able to actualize those goals start reaching out to the people that you think can help you with your goals start doing things that move you closer to your goals every day okay thank you number four thing that i will tell you is that you need to focus on progress 
Focus on the present, not the past, not the future. Like, where are you now? What has gotten you to where you are now? And where are you going? Like, focus on the progress that you have made. If the only thing you've been able to do is write the headline of the article that you want to write, that's progress. Focus on it and try to continue from where you are. Don't look back. Don't think like, oh, what would this article be like when I get there? Instead of thinking, focus on where you are now and continue to try to, you know, get better. Continue to try to act. Continue to try to do. Because a progress mindset would basically show you how far you have come. Like the things that you have done to get where you are and the things that you can do to get to where you are trying to get to track your efforts what did i do that got me here so if i was able to do this thing and it got me here then maybe if i do twice as much then maybe you would be able to get me to where i'm going to that way you are able to eat your goal you will not even have time to start doubting yourself because your thoughts are filled with progress your thoughts are filled with how can i get better your thoughts are filled with i've gotten here now then it means that i'm able to go further do you understand And the fifth and last thing that I would say is that you celebrate your wins. Do not despise the days of your little beginnings. It might look small, but it's a big deal. You did that. You hit 100 subscribers. You hit 500 subscribers. You hit your savings goal. You hit your career goals. You started that course and you completed it. And that is a big deal. Celebrate yourself for that. Because sometimes we are so focused on where we are trying to get to that we forget to actually celebrate the progress that we have made over time that has brought us to where we are. It could be that you buy yourself a gift or it could be that you take yourself out to eat or it could be that you just do something nice for yourself. But please celebrate your wins. Keep track of your wins and celebrate them. Because in the long run, if you look back at how far you have come, you would know that, bruv, you are not small in this life. You're a big deal. But if you do not celebrate yourself, how do you know? If you do not track your progress, how then do you know? So if you've not been celebrating yourself up till now, I want to charge you. Please, find like a reward scheme for yourself. So for every time you eat a goal, it might not even be like the overall big goal. It might be like the small goal or the short-term goal that will lead you to the long-term goal celebrate yourself write it down and sometimes when you do not feel motivated you can go back to your book and read the things that you've done and pat yourself on the back and tell yourself that if you can come this far then you can go farther i'm not even trying to aspire to perspire you you can actually do it like whatever it is that you set your mind to you can do it if only you can read your mind of self-doubt So before I end this video, I would like to point out that I created a workbook that has self-assessment that, you know, would help you check yourself and see the progress that you've made, the things that you are struggling with and the things that you probably need to, you know, stop doing or start doing. Also, there are some exercises in the workbook that you can do to help you crush self-doubt. And lastly, I have a section for affirmations on self-doubt that would, you know, help boost your confidence, that would, you know, help revamp your thoughts with the I can do mindset and all that mindset. And then you can go about crushing your goals. If you would like to get this workbook, the link is in my description box. You can check it out and you can get it immediately. Click on the link right now and go get your workbook. Because remember, we promised ourselves that this year we're going to stand on business, we're going to figure things out, we're going to crush our goals. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. And I hope that this video has challenged you to, you know, be a better person for yourself. And it has challenged you to, you know, crush self-doubt and start eating those goals. I really hope that you've taken one or two things from this video and you would run with them. I'm cheering you on from this end of the world. And I really hope that you work on yourself, you work on your mind, you crush self-doubt and you eat your goals. And if you watched up to this point and you've not subscribed to my channel, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why, but please um, subscribe to my channel before you click out of this video. It would mean a lot to me. And it's just your own way of supporting me and the work that I do. 
and also please give this video a thumbs up just so i know that you enjoyed watching and you liked this type of content that would motivate me to you know create more of this type of content and it would also show youtube that you liked this video and it would recommend it to every other person that might like it or that might need this video until i see you in my next video i like to say that you stay safe and you stay safe. Bye.